I don't know how about you guys, but I already pushed my changes into the GitHub, and this is exactly what I'm going to be doing after each and every video. However, I'm not going to be wasting your time showing the same old things. So again, this is really up to you. You can do it with me after each and every video. As always, remember that you have resources. If you have missed something, you can always download them as well as you can always do that at the very end if that is your preference. However, I would encourage you to use some kind of source control. Otherwise, you might work really, really hard. And then God forbid something is going to happen. And then you're going to lose everything that you have been working on. Now, with that being said, I will going to close the sidebar and we will going to start covering the two methods that we talked about and I'll change as well as handle submit. And both of them should be very, very, very familiar to you because we covered this when we were talking about the controlled inputs and for the handle change, I'm just going to grab the value that I'm getting. And we know that we have the event object and on that we can use the event target and then we have the value. And in this case, since every time I'm going to be typing something, I would like to change the value in a state. I'm going to say this dot and we're going to say set state. And then we will going to pass the object because we don't care. We're not going to be relying on the previous values. And we're just going to say item. And then we're going to say E for event target. Then we say target value. And that's it. You see how easy it is if you have only one input. You really don't have nothing to worry about because the only thing is, as we're typing something, this is going to be updated in the state. And that's all. So let's say I start typing. Notice that everything that I'm going to type is going to be displayed because we do have our handle change method, as well as we do have this item that is set up in a state that gives the initial value and then keeps a track of whatever we're going to be adding. And you know what? Also, guys, by the way, this is too much. So this was an overkill because we're going to be adding the items anyway ourselves. So I thought that in the beginning, I'm going to show you the to do list and we would need to have some kind of information. But in our case, we don't need to do that because we will going to be doing that with handle submit. We have handle change covered. And you know what? I think I can close the console, by the way, because I don't think we'll need it right now. And with handle submit, first of all, I would want to have the prevent default. Remember, previously, we were not even able to see how we we're running the console log because by default, the browser was being refreshed once we submitted the form. So in this case, this is not happening. Now I can click it and I don't have no browser refresh. And now let's figure out what we would want to do. So our main idea is as I type in the item. So this is going to be my item. Then once I click add item, then I'm going to run handle submit since I'm doing the form submission. And now I would like to collect the values from the state. So first of all, I would like to collect the ID. That's going to be my random ID as well as the item that's currently in a state. Obviously, that's going to be something like this in this case. So let's do that. Let's say const new item. And we're going to set this equal to an object. And then here, there's going to be ID property with a value of this dot state ID. So we will going to be getting this random ID as well as we're going to be getting the title. So I'm going to say title this dot set item. And in this case, we're grabbing whatever is going to be hold here as a value. Okay, so we have our item. And next, we would want to update it, meaning I would like to get the array that I have currently in a state, which obviously in the beginning is just going to be an empty array. But eventually with each and every item, we're going to be adding more. So in this case, we're going to do like this. We're going to say const const updated updated items. That was our variable. Then we're going to do the spread operator again, dot, dot, dot. So everything that I have in a state currently, state items. So everything from the items array. And we're going to add the new item, the item that we just created. Okay. And now let's run the last thing, which is going to be this dot set state. So this dot set state. And now we're going to update a few more values in a state not just one that we had here for the item. In this case, we're going to say like this. Well, first of all, items array is going to be right now updated items. That's going to be number one. 
because what we would want is we would want to replace the previous array with the array that we just constructed with previous values plus the new one. And that's number one. Second, I would like to set item to an empty string because obviously I would want to have the empty value every time I'm going to be starting to add the values. Also, I would like to create a new ID because remember, we are getting the unique ID, but we need to start or re render the application. So in our case, I'm going to say, okay, so ID is going to be equal to a new ID. So we're going to set up again, new UUID. We're going to run it because that is the syntax as well as we would want to set up the edit item to false. And in this case, it might not make a lot of sense. You would be like, okay, listen, I don't understand. You already have it here. Item edit item is false. Yeah. But once we're going to start with editing, we're also going to use the same handle submit. And in that case, as we're editing, the edit item is going to be set to true. You cannot see that right now, but I'm telling you that that's how the application has been set up. So I was going to say edit item and we're going to set it back to false again. At the moment, doesn't make much sense. You'll see how it makes sense as we're going to be working with edit item. Let me save this and now let's see what's going to happen. And by the way, in this case, it maybe does have the value of having that. And by the way, I'm missing the this dot state, this state, not state items. And then there is a reason for now to have the console open because I would like to show you what we're going to be having as values. And in this case, obviously, it says, well, edit item is assigned, but we're not using it in the to in to do input. And yeah, that's we're not doing that. That is true. But I think we're going to be able to pass this, go past this and actually just look at our values right now, what we have in a state. And for that, let's actually maybe console log it. Somewhere, let's say every time we're going to be re rendering it. So before the return, or you know what? Yeah, above the return. So let's go over here and let's say console log. And we're going to say this dot state. And we'll see what's going to happen. At the moment, my state looks like this. So that's my edit false value, the ID, the item, and might as well we can make it bigger. And now let's add the item. Let's say again, wake up. Wake up and let's see what's going to happen. The moment we're going to add it, then all the way in the bottom, we're going to have our array. That's going to be what? Well, this is going to be our items. And you know what? This is not going to probably work. Why don't we go back to the fact that we could run the console log whenever we submitted with this not set state? Remember, we had that callback function. I think in this case, this is just going to make more sense. Console log. And remember, we needed to pass the function. So function is going to be right here and we're going to write console log and we're going to be looking for this dot state. And I think in this case, this is just going to make way more sense. Okay, and let me make this bigger and let's write again, wake up or you know what? Let's have make breakfast breakfast and let's see what's going to happen. The moment I'm going to add it here, check it out. I will going to have the items array and that items array is going to have what? Well, it's going to have the ID that we had and we had the make breakfast. That's going to be my item. If I want to add more items, let's say I would want to wake up. Is that going to make sense? Having breakfast before waking up? Probably not. But in our case, let's just test it out again. I'm going to add item and now I have items array with two items. And if I'm looking closer, what I have here, I see that I have the array. And then for each and every item in array, I'm going to have first of all the ID, as well as we're going to have the title that would be make breakfast and all that. And maybe let's see whether this is just going to make a little bit more sense with our React tools. So I'm going to over to React. Then we're going to have the app. And you know what? For all of them, we kind of need to make them really big. And in this case, as you can see, we have the array. So this would be also an option. Now let me add one more item. Um, make breakfast, make dinner, make dinner. And we can see live how we're typing the item. So dinner, this is going to be my item. And the moment we're going to click on it, notice, then I'm going to get new 
ID since we're running this UUID, as well as we're going to be having an empty item. And then the array is going to be with three items. And the third item is going to be make dinner with this unique ID, since obviously this was the last one that we set up. And that would be the basic setup what we have for handle submit. And we also have for handle change. But like I said, this should be already familiar to you because we did cover it extensively in the controlled input section in the tutorial.